So up to this point, guys, we've you know we've had a look here at equity, what it is, expected value. Um, now we want to get into hand matchups. Uh, we touched a little bit on ranges, um, but we want to really get into this this area right here, this hand matchups, ranges, and flops. Yeah, that's how you're going to perform in the long run against opponent certain ranges. Um, this document is, yeah, not the prettiest of documents in the world, but uh, worth its weight in gold. Uh, it's heads up pre-flop matchups, and this is what every good player really needs to be aware of. Just based on based on the matchups of two separate hands and heads up, um, when you know exactly what your opponent's holding. If you don't know this, right? If you don't know how to or what the matchup is when you know your opponent's cards, it's m completely impossible to know what the matchup is when you don't know his cards. You take basically this knowledge and you move a step further into range analysis after the fact. And there again, uh, articles and books from Tony uh, Guerrera, that's um, definitely the place to look and really get in-depth information on that. We'll just kick this off as a principle. There's going to be, you know, maybe a plus, minus, three to five percent difference on any given specific situation based on suited, uh, yeah, say suitedness of the hands, um, of the non-paired hands, uh, connectivity of the non-paired hands, uh, both together, whatever. If you understand this, you understand the principle, and you'll you'll be way ahead of the game in most in most situations. So, uh, the most domination you can have pre-flop in Texas Hold'em. By the way, all this is Texas Hold'em, um, as you see here, uh, is a top pair versus a non-pair where the top rank of the non-paired hand is the same as your pair. That's absolute domination. It's more or less a 90-10 split. All right, you see here with aces versus an ace-9 suited, it's already at 88%. Okay, that's a very specific example. Over pair versus an under pair situation, we've had that already in a couple of videos. Uh, we've seen it here and there. This is aces versus queens. Again, you see this all over the place. 80-20. More or less, you know, 81-19, it, it works out to 80-20 in the long run. 80-20, uh, pocket aces versus a non-pair, it's exactly the same. Okay, exactly the same, not, but as a principle, it's very, very similar. Right, you see here, uh, one over pair versus two undercards. Right, you see this 85-15 yeah, split, let's say, and 80-20 again here for... Uh, the reason this is actually higher with the 8-7 is that there's more, of course, more possibilities for your straight. Right? Uh, you see here nines versus five four suited uh, again seventy eight twenty one just as an example. Pocket aces versus suited connectors it's a bit more for suited uh, the suitedness of that hand uh, basically yeah three percent almost always the suitedness only really gives you three to four percent uh, extra equity in any given matchup. You know you see this eighty twenty seventy five twenty five kind of scenario right here right uh, seventy thirty splits this is what very often people refer to as domination. It occurs when you have a pair versus just one overcard. That's very, very standard. Uh, you see that a lot. Matter of fact, with um, let's say, for example, guys playing, you know, ace, ten, ace, jack versus queens or kings. Right? The, the kings and the queens are going to be also at the same, more or less the same level. Right? Seventy percent pre-flop equity. Here you see sixty-six, thirty-three because of the suited ace. Right? And again, that's almost exactly four percent. Right? Um, very good. Uh, dominate hands, quote unquote, you know, it's with uh, two non-paired hands, right, where the kicker is lesser than than your opponent's, for example. Uh, it's almost always a 70-30 split as well. Uh, even look here at the suited situation. I mean, it's really, really, really close. So, so pair versus one over card, pair is up 70%. Dominated hands, the better kicker is up 70% as a principle. Uh, we get down here to the bottom of this chart. And there we go. 55, 45, pair versus two over cards. You see this quite often. Pair of jacks is at 57% versus 43. You know, more or less 55, 45 split on average. Uh, these twos, you know, this is, when people talk about coin tosses, I don't, I don't call this a coin toss. You know, this 57, 43 split, it's not a coin toss. This is a coin toss, right? Uh, you know, four or five percent equity difference. Uh, you know, I consider that a coin toss. Uh, here, anytime you get into you know ten and fifteen, twenty percent, uh, it's in my mind not a coin toss at all. Um, you, you hear a lot of uh, a lot of guys, especially commentators to to games, talk about uh, 
coin tosses, which in my mind have nothing to do with coin tosses. I mean, it's close, for sure. But it's not a 50-50 split by any means, right? As you see here. Um, again, you know, these kind of situations, definitely coin toss scenarios. Uh, here, you know, you're able to push that, you know, pair of jacks against a king-queen all day long, even with rake, and make a good profit in the long run. <laughs> yeah, ace-king over jack-tens, uh, you know, suited again, 3-4% more. Uh, jack-10 suited over a 5-4 suited, you see it again, 60-40. Uh, jack-10 suited over a 7-2, that's a 70-30, right? Uh, so there is, you know, there is this discrepancy. I mean, there is a bit of a difference depending on the specific holding. But as a principle, two over cards versus a non-pair is a 60-40 split. Two over cards versus a pair is a 55-45 split. Uh, the pair's up. So ace over two cards in the middle, so to say. Uh, again, 55-45 split, more or less. Okay, on the very, very bottom, you see here ace-jack versus king-queen. That's more of a 60-40 scenario because there's not this uh, straight possibility going on. Uh, ace-5 versus uh, ace of diamonds. Seven of diamonds here when this is suited. Increases again, as you see, about 3% equity-wise. Or in the middle card versus a non-pair. Then it's basically when you lace two hands. So you got the ace here, jack here, 10 here, and a 9 here. 60-40. Ace-10, jack-9 again. Suited situation, about 3% more. Uh, and that all the way down, King, uh, Queen 10 versus Jack 9, again also 60-40, more or less, all the way down the line. Put in some of these scenarios that a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, you get a lot of guys <laughs> today, you know, I mean, it's a new game uh, for a lot of people. It's not, you know, not the case that everybody's played, you know, 20-something years there. Uh, I was born and raised in Austin, Texas. Um, that's rarely the case, uh, and even if they were born and raised in Austin, Texas, uh, very often they didn't play much. Yeah, uh, take it for what you will, but uh, because the game is relatively new for quite a few people, and because very, even people who have played for a long time have no idea of this one little, uh, one little PDF that I've shown you guys here, um, they're completely unaware of this scenario. Okay, so you got Ace King versus Seven Two. The Seven Two has thirty-three percent equity preflop. It means if you you know if you both push all in uh, preflop, the seven two is gonna take it down one time in three. That's a hell of a lot. A lot of people freak completely out when they see these scenarios, right? But they it's because they don't know the equity matchup. Poker's a game of math. It's you know it's not a game of ego. Uh, although there's unfortunately a lot of ego involved. If you know this, you're you know, you're way ahead of the game, uh, you can play with a level head, and you know what you're doing. You can let these guys, you know, run the miles, whatever. You know, when you're small stacked and you actually make a move like this, as sometimes you should, according to Nash uh, pushes and uh, uh, call ranges that we've just seen, yeah, just let them talk, right? They, they don't know what they're doing. They really have no idea about this, this kind of stuff. Poker math is, is completely foreign, even to some very, very good players who are very... Yeah, very sound strategic players, you know, they just don't have any of the ideas and uh, background in poker math that, you know, lets them know these kind of scenarios do exist. <laughs> uh, you, you see that a lot, especially with the old school players. Um, you know, they can read you like a book very often. They, you know, they, in the long run, they're going to they're gonna take it down, especially if you're just getting started. Um, but they're often not going to really properly understand this, nor will they want to. So this is to your advantage. Uh, definitely know those numbers. Uh, Ace King over twos. This is a definite coin toss scenario. Uh, again, here suited, non-suited. You see the difference. Nines over twos. You know, very very close. And here you got you know nine eight. It's actually doing better than the twos. <laughs> nine eight performs better than Ace King, by the way, against twos. Um, just for the connectivity of it. And you know ten jack versus sixes. Just a bit above. And these are, you know, these are real matchups, right? Coin tosses, so to say. That being said, that being covered here, very many people today do know these numbers. Very few people know the numbers for multi-way matchups, okay? Which is going to be the case. You're going to need to know this um, in scenarios, especially where you're in, for example, multi-table tournaments with rebuys and add-ons. There's going to be a lot of pushing going on, uh, multi-way pot pushes and stuff like this. And you can actually you can actually call down a bit lighter um, if you know these numbers, okay? And I just you know run again poker stove 
uh, different scenarios here with pairs versus other pairs. Um, if you're in a three-way pair versus under pair scenario, you know the top pair is at 66% here for three players against four like this, all the way down. Two under pairs versus one over card hand. All right, that over pair is just a bit above ace king suited, just a bit. Okay, quite a bit more. You know, namely three <laughs> percent uh, above above the ace king o. Okay, o is again offsuit. S is then suited. Uh, again, check this one out. Sevens and fours, right? Against ten jack suited. Very similar breakdown. You see that? I mean, really, really similar. So this is the, you know, principle is you know the the top pair is around forty to forty five percent. Yep. Uh, next guy's coming in at he's gonna take it down, you know, as he should, you know, if it were just an even matchup, more or less one time in three. And the guy with the under pair is the dog. Right, the big dog. So, um yeah, that all the way down here. Three under pairs versus one over card hand. Um again it's it's a bit closer, right? But um that over pair is still just a bit better. Okay, but as you see here, I mean this ace king, that's why ace kings can be can be pushed and played aggressively in multi-way pots. Uh as you see here, you know, it performs quite well. You're gonna get thirty one percent equity against um you know, against three opponents, right? You actually only need twenty five percent. And this is, you know, that's a playable hand. Good. So two under pairs versus one ace high hand, um kings and queens with that uh, jack underneath those two pairs, as you see here. Kings are doing real well in that situation. Um, the ace jack is actually doing better than the queens, um, just because you do have that ace possibility. Uh, here, uh, with the offsuit, you just see the difference. Imagine that, right about three <laughs> percent, and that comes, of course, from the the suitedness of the ace jack. Uh, suited or non-suited, again, three to four percent equity difference, not much more. So, a lot of beginners, you know, they get crazy about suited hands. Like, You've seen this video now. You understand the, the true difference in equity is again three to four percent. And I'll just probably repeat that two or three more times because suited suited doesn't necessarily mean uh, you know it adds a little equity. It's it's nothing you get excited and write home about. Okay, uh, nines fives against ace eight. Very similar breakdown as you see here. Uh, suited difference. Imagine that approximately three <laughs> percent. Okay, one under pair versus two ace high hands. Um, so ace jack, ace queen scenario um, with the kings in the middle. Kings are doing even better here at 70% because that ace probability is greatly reduced because there's another ace out there. All right, jacks um, versus ace 10, ace two suited, for example, same same kind of deal. Uh, tens versus ace king, ace queen. So now you've got a you got a pair underneath both the kickers. Right, so it means that the king and the queen can hit for a win, which is a market difference. As you see here, you can just check that out. Pause the video, look at that in more detail if you want to. Here's an interesting one. One under pair versus two over card hands. That is just about as even Steven as it gets. Alright, pair eight versus king jack suited and ace queen. These two hands lace and you get an under pair. Say. So, I mean that is a true coin toss in a three-way scenario. Ace queen suited, king jack suited, eights. You know, let's see what the difference is between suited and non-suited. What is that? Uh, yeah, okay, approximately three <laughs> percent. All right, don't forget that, guys. The, uh, the, I mean, the real strength of your equity comes from the rank of your cards, not from the suitedness of your cards. Suitedness, connectivity, especially max stretch connectors. That means five, four to ten jack. Um, that definitely helps, right? Definitely does. But again, yeah, know the principle, and yeah, definitely know that suitedness only helps you out about three, four percent. So twos versus ace king and king, uh, queen jack. All right, so you get two over cards, two under cards, and an under pair. Again, I mean that's close. It's really, really close, right? Even with these four over cards versus the two, um, the twos are going to take it down just under one time in three. Okay, I mean it's it's really really close. You see here the strength of uh, paired hands versus non-paired hands uh, in general. So ace king over ace uh, eight seven suited, uh, an example of a match stretch suited connector, and uh, twos that are completely underneath it. So you can go here seven eight, you can go nine ten jack up, and you can go all the way down uh, six five four for the straight. And none of these cards block any of your straight outs. Um, that helps you out. 
significantly. You are doing better than 33%, which you should have against two opponents just in, in general. That also being said, the ace-king, you know, is the favorite to win. But when you look at his chances of winning against both this guy and this guy winning, right, he's again only going to take it down two times in five. All right, so these, these are things to definitely keep in mind, uh, especially in tournament play. In cash game play, of course, you push this all day long with ace-king. Um, but in tournament, in tournament play, that could be, you know, that could be a very serious mistake, depending on the, uh, yeah, your position, payout structure, etc. Okay, here, um, we're getting to the end of this. One under pair versus three over card hands. There's six cards above these eights that can beat it. Yeah, any, any nine, ten, jack, queen, king, or ace that comes is going to beat your eights here, right? Eights still have 21%, right? And why is that? Well, because pairs, I mean, pocket pairs are going to hit their trips you know, by the river, more or less one time in five. That's why you see that quite often with uh, with pairs. I mean, they're going to be, yeah, depending on the matchup. Let's see if we get another under pair, under pair scenario. Yeah, getting here, queens, you know, it basically has to hit a queen in that situation. You know, 17, 18, 19% um, that you're going to you're gonna hit that queen, and these other guys aren't going to uh, set up on top there. Yeah, good. Okay, with the eights. Um, ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine. Everybody's suited. Here, everybody's off suited. Uh, the eights perform, you know, more or less the same. Um, you know, because everybody then went suited. You know, it's more or less the same scenario. Uh, ace, king, o, queen, jack, five, four. Right, suited here in both scenarios, and you just see the breakdown as follows. Good. Okay, non pairs versus the other non pairs. Um, very close scenarios. Uh, ace king suited, you know, jack ten five four. Here you have it, um, just with the O. Ace king off suit. Ace king suited. What's the equity difference there? I can't even read it. Oh, yeah, it's approximately three percent for the suited hand. Yeah, imagine that. Again, guys, suitedness. Yeah, add three four percent to your hand. Why not? Don't get crazy about it. Ace king O is, you know, and it should be in your mind almost as strong. And you should play it almost exactly the same as you're going to play your ace king suited in most scenarios. Most scenarios. Here you just have uh, multiple matchups here, non pairs versus non pairs. You guys can check that out. Pairs versus three over cards uh, and non pairs. So we've got, yeah, I think we had a scenario also above. The jacks here, you got three over cards. Jacks are still at 45%. Um, tens very. Uh, tens, king, queen, ace, eight. Getting closer all the way down here with the suitedness.